Hello, hello, I'm Breton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into medical school and other professional programs. Welcome back to our MCAT prep series. In today's session, we will journey into the world of electrical circuits, resistance, and capacitance. So get comfortable and let's get started with absolutely crushing the chem phys section. Beginning with resistance. What is resistance? It is the opposition a substance offers to the flow of electric current. Think of it as electrical friction. Resistors, which are conductive materials with a moderate amount of resistance, slow down electrons without completely stopping them. The resistance of a resistor is determined by its resistivity, length, and cross-sectional area, A. As given by the formula here, resistance equals the resistivity, it's, a, it's supposed to be rho here, but I drew it as a P, times the length and the cross-sectional area represented by the schematic of a wire down here. Well, how else can resistance be useful to us? The most important electrical equation you need for the MCAT is one of the most simple on the exam, and it is twinkle, twinkle, little star, V equals IR. If you're going to memorize any equation, it's got to be this one. Voltage equals current times resistance. The point of Ohm's law says that the magnitude of the current through a resistor is proportional to the voltage drop across the resistor. And why does this matter? Well, we can use this equation to solve everything from fluid dynamics in the blood to circuitry, like we'll see here. When resistors are connected in series, the resistances simply add together. For example, if we have three resistors in a row, R1, R2, and R3, the total resistance, if we can bind these all, and we can set this equal and make the circuit a lot easier to do, we just simply add them. So the total resistance is one plus two plus three. Nice and easy. However, once we start messing around with parallel circuitry, things get a little more complicated. Instead of just simply adding them together, we have to actually add the reciprocals to get the total amount of resistance. Now, if you can understand the total resistance when wired in series versus parallel, awesome. Then capacitors are going to be nice and easy because you just flip that logic on its head. Capac a capacitor in series, if we have put three capacitors in series, we just add those reciprocals, so 1 over C plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3 to get the C total. Now, something I want you to notice about, about when we're adding the reciprocals is the C total is always going to be smaller than any one of the initial C1, 2, or 3s. So we are losing total capacitance if we wire it in series. Likewise, with resistance, if we wire resistors in parallel, we are dropping the amount of resistance in the circuit. There are also a few critical capacitance equations that you need to know for the MCAT. Probably the most important one is C capacitance equals the permeativity constant times the area over the distance between the plates. Another key equation is the electric field in a capacitor is E equals the voltage over distance. And finally, whenever there's E, we need to worry about potential energy, which in this case, we'll symbolize potential energy as U, and set that equal to one half C V squared with C being the capacitance, not the speed of light and V being the voltage. Now, these are all the equations you will need to know for capacitors and resistors. So put these in your Anki decks. These are some things you will not want to forget. Finally, let's talk about the devices used to measure these electrical properties. Ammeters are inserted into a circuit in series to measure the current and have negligible resistance, whereas voltmeters are inserted in parallel, and they are measuring the voltage drop across this area, and they do this by being infinite in their resistance, or we assume infinite. Then finally, ohmmeters, ohm referring to ohm's law, and they are going to measure the resistance in the system, and we do this by inserting them around the resistor itself to see, and we do this by putting them around a resistor. And these have zero resistance, which should make sense. If our ohmmeter had resistance, well, then we wouldn't be measuring the resistance in the system. We'd be introducing resistance, and that just doesn't make sense. Now, let's test your understanding with a practice problem. Suppose we have a circuit with a 12-volt battery, a 4-ohm resistor, and a 2-ohm resistor connected in series. What is the total current in the circuit, and what is the voltage drop across each resistor? Pause the video here and try and solve this using the concepts we just discussed. 
All right, let's work through this together. So we have two resistors. They're wired in series, so we can simply add those. So four plus two will give us our total resistance. So now we want to remember the most important equation on the MCAT, V equals IR. So we solved for R, so we can put that in. And oh, would you look at that? We've already got V. So we'll just say 12 equals I times 6. Divide that, divide 12 by 6, and we get 2 equals our current. Boom, that easy. Thank you so much for watching our video on resistance and capacitors, and I will see you next time.